We all know that LinkedIn is dead, but the problem is most of the advice that I see online is still optimizing for that dead system. I want to step back. I want to look at the root causes of what's going on with the AI job market collapse, and I want to talk it through step by step and get to a spot by the end of this 10 minute video or so, where you actually have a clear perspective on what's going on, a clear sense of your actionables, the tools you have at your disposal that are not just the standard advice. And if you're in the hiring chair, a clear sense of how you can start to differentiate as you hire. So let's get into it. We don't have a lot of time. Number one, the core issue here is that signals in the hiring market have collapsed to zero because marginal cost of information production is also zero. In other words, the job market used to work because signals were expensive to produce. So a resume took time. A good written resume took more time. Cover letters took genuine thought. I used to be able to read a resume and I could read the effort behind it. The cost worked because the cost separated signal from noise. AI has collapsed that cost to zero. We all know that, we live that every day. When you can write a good resume at zero cost, and in fact, pump out 10 different custom resumes, there is no information in that signal. The fancy word for this is that this is Shannon entropy and Shannon entropy is playing out in the labor markets, right? The less fancy way of saying it is that because it doesn't cost anything to make information, that information loses signal value in hiring and we're all in trouble. That's what we feel, right? What's interesting is we mostly talk about it from the talent side, but the truth is both sides are drowning. A thousand applications per job sucks for everybody. And the problem is both sides right now tend to give advice that creates more noise to cut the noise. So yell louder, but everyone's being told to yell louder. Everyone's being told to put a portfolio out there. Everyone's being told to start a social media presence of some sort. Everyone's being told that like, you should be like putting more and more job descriptions out there if you're a hiring manager. And it all adds up to this cacophony of noise in the AI job market. And what I wanna to suggest to you is that the information equilibrium that we used to have before 2022 is permanently gone. It is not coming back. More noise does not fix this. In the past, strong candidates could afford the effort to raise the noise level and they could break through with signal and weak candidates faced issues with their ability to actually put the effort in and generate quality work. And so we started to have a useful signal when people put more effort in. LLMs have destroyed the value of effort from good candidates and they make it equally cheap for everyone to produce infinite signals. And I think we have to start by just admitting the old game that we played before 2022 is over and we don't know how to play the new game yet. That's what I'm getting to with this video. Every solution we have is adding to that noise. And I wanna be honest about that, right? When you optimize your resume, when you optimize your portfolio website, it all adds to the noise. And so what I want to suggest here is that what we need to do is to move from a world where information is cheap to produce for everybody to a world where we start to see verification instead of credentialing. So credentialing is what we used to do. Credentialing is what a resume is for. Credentialing is when we have certifications. Verification actually shows in a provable way that we have the skill. And I think that we are trying to make our little baby steps that way when we talk about the idea of proving work through a portfolio. But we can go a lot farther than that if we go back to first principles and actually reason this through. Let's look at what it takes when you see verification as the heart of a new way of thinking about jobs in the post AI era, in the era when information costs nothing to produce. I wanna suggest five quick principles for a verification world. And I wanna to start to suggest to you how we could start to build those out and game those out even now. One of the hard things, one of the things that has make it, made it difficult to make this video is that a marketplace like the talent marketplace is sometimes stuck in a bad equilibrium where every single stakeholder has an incentive to change it, but none of us can do it by ourselves. I wanna give you tools that work even in a difficult equilibrium like we're in right now. And that's what I've been really wrestling with. So the five principles that follow are scalable. They work both, you can see elements of them now, and they have teeth that lets you get into a better equilibrium if we can all work together 
as a tech ecosystem. So principle number one, process over outcome. Outcomes are more easily fakeable now. LLMs, as I've been saying, they generate code, they generate write-ups, they generate demos. Process patterns are closer to that verification world. Process patterns are hard to fake. We look for them in interviews, the iteration cycles you took to get something done, where you got stuck, how you debugged some vibe code, what you would do differently. Effective LLM use, effective LLM building, effective LLM writing has a shape. You can iterate, you can backtrack, you can override, but it's much, much easier to distinguish the shape of good LLM co-work versus blind acceptance. And so I think that one of the things that we should start thinking about is making our process the product when it comes to the talent marketplace. This has concrete implications for your portfolio. If you're looking at your portfolio as an outcome, maybe you want to look at it as a process or a story that you're telling where you include the debugging and the getting stuck and what you do differently. The most effective portfolio site I have ever seen told a full three-year story of a product. Every stage along the way was honest about mistakes, showed failed designs. It was absolutely compelling. The process matters more than the outcome, and you can't fake the process the way you can fake the outcome in the age of AI. It's number one. Number two, we need to make verification easier, not make signals better. Companies don't need better candidates, actually. Most of them have all the candidates they need sitting in the applicant pool, as the applicants will tell you. It's that they can't tell who's real. So stop optimizing for better resumes and shinier portfolios in that world because the companies won't be able to tell. Instead, start optimizing for things that are more verifiable. How can you show work trials where you solved a real problem? How can you, and by the way, as a hiring manager, you should be looking at work trials. That is actually a good way to get a sense of how people work in this world and it gives them something they can show. What about live problem solving videos where you get on with a candidate and you solve a problem together? That's a great way to sort of make this work as well. And if you're a candidate, you don't have to wait. You can live solve a meaningful problem. And I've seen people do it in videos where they get on and they say, you know what? I took a look at your onboarding funnel. These are the three things I think I'd change. This is why. This is how I'd change it. This is how I'd test, et cetera. You can just start to problem solve. And again, you're showing that process and you're making it, you're, you're sort of surfacing verification because one of the things I will tell you on the talent side, companies want to do this, but they by and large don't know how and they are stuck in the existing default circumstance. The goal of this video is to shake up the status quo a little bit and get people thinking differently because I think that both sides need to think differently to shake this equilibrium loose. Ultimately, the winner in a system like this isn't the one that yells the loudest. It is the one who makes hiring decisions the easiest. And if I could tell talent one thing, if you're looking for a role, make the hiring decision the easiest thing. That is actually the mindset to be in more than the noise. Principle number three, we can start to use LLMs to generate verification, not just to generate text. Now this starts to get creative, maybe a touch speculative. There might be a product idea here, but I think there's something for both the talent side of the ball and also for the hiring side of the ball here. The point is this, we are mostly using LLMs as noise generators in the talent marketplace. We shouldn't be. LLMs are actually really effective judge, judges of other people's work. They're effective evaluators, they're effective researchers, they're creative thinkers, and they're verifiers. In other words, these are machines that compute with words, and we are just using them to produce lots and lots of cheap text instead of thinking more creatively, what could we do with this capability? As an example, a cryptographically signed LLM conversation shows your prompt quality and your iteration pattern. Now, you may not be able to cryptographically sign it because I'm not sure I know of a startup that does that, but you can still right now show your prompt quality and iteration pattern. Again, we're going back to that process piece, aren't we? LLM generated adaptive assessment finds your competence ceiling efficiently. What that means is you can actually get the LLM to progressively test you and ask you harder and harder and harder questions. I wrote an AI fluency assessment uh, just a few days ago on the Substack, and it had some of that built into it, but you can go farther. You can actually design an LLM competence assessment that asks harder and harder and harder questions as you go to eventually find where you top out.
And I think that that's actually useful, not just for hiring managers to find signal. It's also useful, again, on the process side for talent to show what what you're capable of, right? Like if you can go through and you can take the hardest, most gnarly product management questions that an LLM can throw at you and answer them in a high quality way after going through 15 easy, medium, increasingly difficult ones, that says something, especially if you can see the whole process, if you can see that you're not gaming the system. So I think that we are overdue for using LLMs to create signal where there just hasn't been any signal whatsoever, right? It's like we're pouring all of this energy for AI into making noise in a crowded, noisy marketplace, but there are quiet spaces where nobody's talking at all. Why aren't we using AIs a little bit more creatively beyond just generating resumes, right? Beyond just generating cover letters. All right, principle number four, bilateral value creation. You want to help companies to verify themselves. I know this sounds funny if you're talent, like why do the companies need the help? But trust me, most companies do not know what they really need. They don't. They're posting LLM generated job descriptions for fuzzy roles, and they need help to clarify in most cases. You can interview them about the problem space, right? You can write analyses of their challenges. You can offer trials that validate their needs. I know people who are doing this and are sort of taking command of the job process because the company is trying to figure out the answer. And it feels really good for them when a talented candidate comes along and says, let me help you get clarity on this role. This is what you actually need. If you want a cheat code for more senior interviews, a lot of your senior interviews for director and up roles look like that because they're all custom made. And so you end up in a place where you are helping the company to figure out for both of you what the company really needs in the role, and then secondarily, whether you're a fit. In that situation, you're not just proving your capability, you're helping them understand what capability they are looking for. That is the kind of value that an AI resume can't give. That is the kind of value that reminds them that you produce value that can't be gotten from Cluely or ChatGPT, right? Like it's something that is essential in the human to human connection of work, which by the way, lest we forget, is the whole point of all of this. Principle number five, you need to be looking at capability spaces more than job titles. I saved the best one for last. And AIPM means different things at different companies. We all know that but we lack a vocabulary for the next level. So what I wanna encourage you to do is to think about it this way. Job titles are often noise at this stage because the roles are evolving so quickly and it's part of what makes the talent marketplace so noisy. So instead of looking at all AIPM roles, position yourself across capability spaces. Look at technical communication. Maybe that's a strength for you. Look at system design under situations of uncertainty. Look at LLM evaluation. Is that a skill that you have? Look at rapid prototyping. Build a project that works across multiple capabilities. Show your process, which is one of the things I've been calling out. Match on problem types that they need to have solved. And so one of the things that I think is actually really slept on is that we have semantic search available now that will allow you to match on much more than just keywords. And yet our entire job ecosystem still runs like the twins on keywords. Why is that? Why can't we have a job semantic search that matches not on keywords, but on the capabilities? It's not that hard. And there you can actually build one yourself. If you wanted to do a project where you built a rag and you could build out a listing of jobs in a particular job family, and you could semantically search to see where the correct role targets are, all of the tech is on the table. That is basically a weekend project at this point. You can transcend the title matching game entirely with, with work like that. And the larger point, whether you wanna build a rag for your personal job search or whether I'm inspiring someone to do that because I bet I am, the larger point is this, think in capability spaces. Think in terms of what are the capability sets you can show? How can you lay out that process really transparently? And then, and then you can get into a space where you can start to show what you know in a way that's provable. And that gets all the way back to verification. The larger point is this, as more LLMs create more noise, as the crowd runs to have LLMs generate resume after resume, generate AI answer for interviews after AI answer for interviews, verification is only going to become more valuable, not less valuable. 
The tactics I'm laying out here are designed to have increased returns. The more the market breaks, the bigger your advantage for making vetting easier because that is the core problem companies are facing. I don't want to give you principles here that require everyone who is listening to this to yell louder and compete with each other. Instead, I want to give you things that let you zig when the market is zagging. And right now the market is zagging hard toward yelling in a noisy marketplace with AI. So let's find some creative alternatives, shall we? You are building with these kinds of moves toward a new equilibrium while everyone else is clinging to the old one. And that gap is going to widen with time. The LLM noise crisis is not going away. I said at the top, this is a permanently broken system. It's broken permanently, not because of anybody's bad intent, but because LLMs have permanently reset the cost of this kind of information to zero. So this is not really advice for navigating a broken system. It is positioning you for the future system that will replace it. And it's setting you up to work well, even now in a system that is not quite ready to reach that new equilibrium. It is a principle for bridging. How can we succeed now and zig while the market is zagging? And how can we build toward a better equilibrium? The bottom line is this, information has become free in the last two years. Verification has become priceless. The winner makes verification. Think about that. Good luck in your job search. Good luck hiring. It's hard to hire too.